to finish off the SQL basics um, at PCTeach.me, the real final area after dealing with joins and our where clause um, and our basic select is to deal with summarizing information, which is known as aggregation. Um, this is where we come across something that was l briefly talked about at the back end of the join video, which is about group by. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the reins back in and just go back to a single table to start with just something quite straightforward so what we've got here is we've just got our customers table with 91 rows and let's say I wanted to break it down into different countries so what we could do is we could use the group by clause now before you do the group by clause it's always a good idea to sort of basically break out what you're trying to achieve in regards to the fields that you want to show now the key things to remember with the group by clause is you're not going to show detail you are never going to show individual transactional records. The whole point of group by is to get rid of that just to see the overall. If you wanted to see both, this is really where you go into the realms of reporting, where you would do the transactional and let the report then do the summary information. For SQL purposes, we're not interested in that. And the group by option gets used quite a lot with subqueries, which is going to be more of our advanced techniques that we'll talk about on another video. So all I'm going to do on this one is I'm interested in how many countries there are in um, the customer database. Um, so I'm going to leave that select star from customers alone and, and start again underneath because I'm going to refer back to this top one a few times through this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do select country um, and I'll just space it out to make it easier to read country and then I'm going to do count star. Now, count star means just count all um, records um, in the system. Now, alternatively, you could have just said, um, what's the primary key on this? Well, we've got the customer ID, so I would have said customer ID. That would have done the same thing, and generally it's a better idea to use a specific field rather than just using the star symbol. So I'll leave it like that, but you can use count star if you wanted to. Now, I'm going to say then from, and I'll say uh, customers. Now I'm going to leave it like that and just run it and see what happens. Now what you should find is it won't like it um, because it then starts coming up with terminology I've just briefly mentioned at the beginning. It says things like it's an aggregated function um, and it's the group by clause. Now a tip for all you newbies out there. If you're doing it through SQL Server Management Studio and you get errors, don't panic. Look for the capitalized words. That generally tells you where you've got your problem. In this case, it's telling me I do not have a group by clause if I want to use count. Because basically what we're telling it to do is I want to add up, or sorry, I want to count how many customer IDs have have I got in that particular country. Now the problem is that I'm trying to display all the countries at the moment, all 91 of them, which is from the customers table back here. You know, there's, there's quite a few countries. What I want to do is I want to group by those countries. So what you need to do is at the bottom type in group by and then put in country. So another way of looking at it if, you, if you're trying to get to grips with it is any aggregated function that you decide to put in here all you need to do in your group by is group by the ones which you aren't aggregating ie anything which hasn't got sum count min max average whatever they are your group by fields so now let's just run this and hopefully we should be okay and there we go now okay the count needs a field alias so I'll just call it um, total and we can run it like that uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me highlight what I want to run rather than just running everything. And there you go. So it's somehow coming in alphabetical order because we are grouping by the country. Um, but we may want to change the order in regards. I want to see the top 10. So what I can do is underneath that, I can then put in my order by statement. And I'm going to say order by two, which is my um, second column. And if I uh, run that, in fact, uh, before I catch myself out, let's make sure it's descending. And if I run that now, there we go. So we can see USA is at the top, followed by France, Germany, Brazil, and the UK is bringing up the rear, as usual, um, in the fifth place spot. Now, we can do loads of other things. Now, let's go back to the customer information. 
Uh, let's see what else we can do. Well, we've chosen country, but what if I wanted to then split by city so it grouped it together in a better way? Well, no problem. All we do is we just say, OK, well, country comes first, followed by city. And all we've then got to do is in the group by is just add city into there. And if I run that now, I should now get a better detailed breakdown of the information. So now I can see that Poland's there and we've got um, Warzala, um, USA, Walla Walla, um, France, Versailles, Canada, Vancouver and so forth and so forth. But we saw there was a lot in the USA. So what we're better off doing is adjusting the ordering because we knew there was about, what, I think 13 USA um in the country what we need to do is we need to order by one followed by uh, two um, and probably followed by um, three in a descending order so anywhere we have the same city more than once will bubble to the top so let's just run that now and see what happens oh order by three I should put a comma in that would help there we go so it shows even the best of us have problems and there you go. So you can see Argentina's at the top. Buenos Aires has three. Um, but then we can go down and you can see that um, we now got it in order. But you've now grouped it to a, a further level. And you can keep going if you wanted to. Now, what I want to do now is I'm going to pause the video and I'm just going to expand the basics. I'm going to go back to joining the customers and orders because then we can start looking at adding values together. Okay, I've spun things on here. What I've done is I've um, got the customers and the orders table that we've dealt with on our previous videos. If you're unfamiliar with these, I'd recommend you go and have a look at some of the previous videos I've talked about this, um, which is the customers and the orders. Now, what I've done is I've also introduced now this third and final table, really, the order details table. Now, for the purposes of illustration, I've included another table that I'm not going to use anywhere else called products. And if I just run that, what you'll see is that you've got the order ID, which comes from the orders table, and as you can see this first order ID like your invoice number is repeating say three times um, and you'll notice that the product ID is unique and then I've just brought in the product name just to show you they were the product so if you were a stationary office you would sell um, pencils paper clips um, reams of paper um, and numbers of quantities and units on them under the one invoice number and that's what we are doing here. So, something that I've created much, much earlier. Um, and if I just scroll down and run this, what this is, is there's no group by or anything on this. All I'm doing here is when I run it, is I'm showing that I've got the customer, the company name, the order, the unit price, quantity, and the total. So that's just quantity times unit price. But I'm more interested in what the total price of each order would be. I don't want to see this VIN al cools repeated three times. I just want to see it once. So what do we do? Well, we need to do the group by option. So all I would do is I'll go to the bottom. I'll do group by. And I say, well, I want to group by the customer ID. I also want to group by the company name because I only want to see these once on the list. Um, but I also want to group by the order ID, but I'm not interested in the unit price and the quantity. I am interested in the total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So at the top, I'm going to do sum and those two. And then I'm just going to get rid of the unit price quantity because I'm not interested in those whatsoever. So I'm telling it to group by these three values. I should just put in the C dot. Oh, the C dot and the O dot, just to indicate that I'm talking about the customers and the orders information. Now, if I run this, watch what happens. As you can see now, what I get is I just get the order number appearing once and the total. So now I'm using my aggregate again, but rather than doing a count, I'm doing a sum. Now I could do other things. I could do what's the maximum order, what's the minimum order, but I would probably be more interested without the order ID. So um, you would drop the order ID and say, give me max of that. And then it will tell me what the maximum um, values are on, on all, all orders. Now, what I'm going to do to finish off on this is uh, now I've given you the basics. The final thing is the other thing that you would want to have, which is having. Now, having basically put is the equivalent of the where clause when it comes to um, um, aggregated data. So let's say that you're interested in any orders that have hit over a thousand. So I'm going to say sum of order of that and then greater than 1000. 
I'll do greater than or equal to actually. And now if I run this, watch what happens. You transform it again because you're telling it to aggregate it all. And now all it's going to do is it's just going to show you the, the orders which are over a thousand. And you see now that's changed. Look at the bottom. 419, if I now run it again without the having statement, it'll suddenly jump to 830. So you've immediately halved the orders. Now, the where clause won't work on this. It has to be having because the rule is if you're using group by and you're trying to do calculations or try to do criteria on calculations, you must use having. So hopefully this video has explained a bit more about how the group um, buy option um, works, but there is more to follow.